Hi there and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to be sharing two different methods to doing mass production of stamping and coordinating die cutting. I like to make several cards at once, so these methods have been helpful to me and I thought they might be to you also. So you can see all these pieces I cut pretty quickly using these methods. Now I will at the end show some things that I plan to do with these pieces to turn into cards also. I'm using two new stamp sets along with the coordinating dies for today's examples, and these are from Mama Elephant. They have a happy mail theme to them, which I think we can all appreciate because of what we do. I love these little pandas, the little envelopes, and also that happy mail sentiment. So these are the ones I'll be using today. Now before I show you the two methods that I think are time savers, I want to show you how we kind of normally do stamping and coordinating die cutting, just in case you've never done it before. So normally what I do if I want to stamp and die cut a bunch of these is I put several images on one acrylic block, stamp them at once, then I take the coordinating dies and use a little piece of tape to line them up and tape them in place. Then I run that through my die cut machine. Some people like to die cut then stamp, but either way you're taking a lot of time to do a lot of lining up. And that can be time consuming if you're doing a bunch of them at once. If I only needed to stamp and die cut out a few, this is the way I would do it. But if you want to make a bunch, there are two methods that I found were helpful in saving time. There are lots of other methods out there. These are just the ones that worked best for me and I wanted to share today. The first one uses a product called Press and Seal, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but don't worry if you don't have it, I'll make suggestions of other things you can use. Okay, for this method, I'm just going to put a bunch of images on one acrylic block and I'm gonna leave them there and stamp these repeatedly as many times as I want onto my desired cardstock. It doesn't matter how you orient it as long as you keep all of those images in the same position on that block. So I'm going to stamp these just several times on here. You could do it as many as you want. Notice I'm stamping off the paper here. That was poor planning. I cut my paper too small, but you can get as many images as you want. Now we need to get our dies ready. So I'm going to put the coordinating dies with a tiny little piece of medical tape in position over one of the sets of stamped images here. We only have to do this once with this method. Okay, so this is where Press and Seal comes into play. Press and Seal is a product that you can get at most grocery stores. It's kind of like a fancy saran wrap. Basically, you tear a piece off, put it over something, press around, and it seals. This is really handy in the craft room also. As I said, you can get it at most uh, grocery stores, but Simon Says Stamp also sells it. There are many things you can do with this product in, the craft, in your craft room. And at the end of this video, I'll link to a guest video my friend Lori did on my YouTube channel showing another technique for using press and seal. Now the fun thing about this is my husband is the inventor on press, of Press and Seal. He works at Procter & Gamble. They license this to Glad, but I think it's fun to be able to use one of his products in my craft room. Please know I don't get anything by promoting this. He doesn't get bonuses for how well it sells. So I'm really just using it because it's practical to use on your craft projects. If you don't have press and seal for this technique, you could use strips of maybe a light adhesive tape or post-it paper. Okay, so I've cut a small piece of press and seal. I'm going to lay it down over my dies nice and flat. Once you make sure you don't have any wrinkles in it, you're gonna press that down so that the dies stick to it nicely. Then you're going to carefully remove your paper, making sure that the dies stay where they are. Now this is sticky if you touch it, if you press down on it. It's not sticky by just touching it, but you gotta press on it. I wanna remove some of that stick. So I'm putting some powder on it with my anti-static powder tool. You can skip this if you want to, but it just makes peeling it off the paper easier. So now that I have all my dies connected and in the right position, I can just quickly pick it up, put it over my stamped images and run that through my die cut machine. Just leave that press and seal on there. This keeps all those dies connected so that you can use this over and over again and not have to line up the dies each time. So while the press and, steel is still in, press and seal is still in place, I just pop out all of the die cuts and then remove the press and seal from the paper. And now we can move on and die cut the next bunch. Again, it's saving me time because I don't have to line up each individual die each time. I just pick up this piece, just line it up once and run it through again. And you can keep doing this as many times as you want. Once you're done, you can easily remove the dies from the press and seal and you're good to go. 
Again, if you don't have the press and seal, you could use several strips of tape, like a, maybe a painter's tape, a few pieces of washi tape just lined up, whatever you need to do to connect those dies together. So you can do this over and over again. But as I mentioned, a lot of crafty people have done techniques using press and seal. So it's a good thing to have in your craft room. So that is the first method. The second method that I, I prefer to use uses the press and seal and the MISTI stamping tool. The MISTI stamping tool is something that I've used many times in videos. It's a wonderful stamp positioning tool. And I just find that I get really good results when I use it. I get those stamped images perfectly centered on the coordinating die cuts. There are many, many, many techniques that you can do with the MISTI stamp positioner, and I'll link to a bunch of those videos at the end of this video. I encourage you to check them out and see all the wonderful things that other crafters have done with the MISTI tool. Now for this, you put your paper into the MISTI right pushed up against the corner, and then you lay all your stamp images down onto it where you want them to end up. Now at this point, I decided I wanted to stamp and die cut a bunch of unicorns also, so I just decided to stick this mama elephant unicorn in here, but it turns out I don't have the coordinating die for it, so please just pretend that unicorn's not there. <laughs> okay, so now that I have them positioned, I just press the door down on my Misty, and all those stamps are together. Just like we did it together on an acrylic block earlier, but here we're doing it in the MISTI, and there's one huge advantage to that, and that is I can double stamp these or triple stamp these to get a really solid, really dark image. I want to color these with Copic markers. Copic markers need a Copic-friendly black ink, and this is the My Favorite Things Black Hybrid ink. This is a great ink for using with Copics, but sometimes I want it to be super dark black. So what I can do with the MISTI is ink it up and stamp it as many times as I want. And because I'm using this stamp positioner, it will stamp in the exact same spot each time. So I can get a perfect stamped image every time. So I have all of these pieces stamped once, and now it's time to do our first set of die cutting. So in this case, I'm going to line up each of the dies with the stamped images using a tiny piece of tape to hold them in place. Again, pretend that unicorn's not there. Okay, so after I have all my dies in place, I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my die cut machine and die cut each of these. Now in this case, I'm going to keep these little pieces that I've stamped and die cut, and I'm gonna use those on a project, but I'm also going to keep the negative space, all that leftover white cardstock. I'm going to use that as a guide for the rest of my stamping and die cutting. I now can remove my dies. Now I'm gonna keep that negative space for the stamping that we're gonna do in a moment. But first I need to die cut a bunch of these shapes from white cardstock. So I'm just randomly lying all these dies down onto white cardstock. I'm going to take another piece of press and seal and I'm going to lay it down over these dies. This will connect them so each time I don't have to fiddle with each of the little dies individually. I just use it as one big piece. However, you could tape these together if you wanted to or just keep the dies individual. Doesn't matter how they're positioned on here, we're just cutting a bunch of plain white die cuts. And I'm going to create a bunch and make little piles off on the side of my desk. It's really easy to just push through the press and seal side to pop out each of the white die cuts. And now I can carefully remove that press and seal. Now I didn't put that sticky uh, non-stick powder on it this time, and you can see it still peels off the cardstock okay. But I do recommend putting that non-stick powder on there just to make it come off quicker. So here I'm just gonna keep die cutting and repeat this over and over for as many die cuts as I want. So now it's time to stamp on these die cuts. So I'm taking that negative space that I used before and I'm going to put that back into the corner of my MISTI. And now I can take each uh, one of each of the die cuts and kind of pop them right into place like a puzzle piece right into the openings. And now when I ink up these stamps and stamp them down, they're gonna stamp perfectly onto those die cuts because we're using that negative space as a guide. So now I can ink it up and stamp it, and here's the advantage of the MISTI. Look it, I didn't do a good job stamping one of those pandas, so all I have to do is ink it up and stamp it again. So I can stamp this as many times as I want, and each time it'll stamp in the exact same place, which is perfectly centered on those die cuts. So now I have a first set of die cuts ready to go. Now it was at this point that I thought of something that would make this even better, and that is to put a piece of press and seal on the back side of our negative space guide. 
You could use some post-it tape on the back of it or even some masking tape, whatever you want. And this will help to hold those little die cuts in place as you're doing this. You really don't have to do this, but I found that it was helpful because I was doing so many of these. So I'm putting some press and seal onto the back side of the negative space and I'm gonna just trim the extra off. Now when I put this into my MISTI right into the corner, that little bit of sticky that's showing through those openings will hold the die cuts in place. And it'll make sure I get great results no matter what and those little die cuts won't shift. Really this isn't a problem. You know, usually those little die cuts kind of stay in the negative space, but this will make sure that I can just go through, put these in place very quickly and do all my stamping very quickly. And again, each of those little die cut openings has a little bit of that sticky press and seal behind it, so it holds those little die cuts in place. So now, for this set of die cuts, I can just go through, ink up my stamps very quickly, and stamp them, and I can double stamp them to make them even darker. And you'll see that every time that stamping is perfectly centered on those die cuts. So in my first method, I did my stamping, then I did my die cutting. In this method, I'm doing my die cutting and then the stamping. The advantage of this is that you can double stamp with the MISTI. Or you could use the MISTI for the first method if you wanted to. I just wanted to show you this option. I know a lot of people like to do this negative space guide with their MISTI for their stamping on die cuts. It's just another option. After all that stamping and die cutting, I have a bunch of pieces ready to go. I'm going to use these to make some quick cards and I saved some of them so I could make some cards with my kids later on. I did add some Copic coloring to them, but not much. Thankfully, pandas don't need much coloring. Did a little Copic coloring and added some shimmer with my Wink of Stella clear shimmer pen. Now I did make a few cards and the first batch I just took some craft note cards that are cut to three and a half by five and a half, or I'm sorry, three and a half by five. And I stamped some backgrounds on it, tone on tone. And I just added the little panda with the box. You can see the shimmer on the hearts. And I white heat embossed a sentiment from the Happy Mail stamp set from Mama Elephant. I also made this tag here. I'm gonna make more like this and add this to a red note card. Now for this one, I die cut this For You sentiment. This is from a new die set from Mama Elephant. It has Hello in it and For You and this fun folding up gift card little pocket envelope here. I just used the For You die from that, added it to a heat embossed background, and put on a few little sequins too. So I can make some quick cards now that I have all these pieces ready to go. I hope these two methods of mass producing stamped die cuts is, are helpful to you. There are many variations of it. Hopefully it'll inspire you to find what works best for you. Now to see these cards and find more information, you can go over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com by clicking there on the top left on my logo. You can also find all the supplies I used down below in the YouTube description. In the middle, I have a link to a press and seal idea, idea video for you, and also a link to some other techniques you can do with the MISTI stamping tool. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.